the way back You ain't have no swag You did a little research Now you got a moon bag Now you got a new walk Now you got new swag You did a little research Now you got a moon bag So ladies and gentlemen, with digital assets We hodl and we trade And when we do hodl, we make sure it's on a cold storage wallet So we have full access to our funds and no one else, okay? You're talking about the decent wallet here. The link is in the description. The most easy and safe hardware wallet, enhanced crypto protection, built on the highest security standards. Link is in the description. Holla at your boy. What is going on, Blockchain Monkeys? Eagle here and honor. Thank you for coming to my jungle. First of all, I'm no financial advisor whatsoever, nor am I professional in blockchain technology. But there is one thing that I absolutely will do. And let's give you my opinion. So today, we got XDC's Atul Ritesh in an interview. I mean, he just goes ham on real world assets. But before we can even get started, we got Globians who is nonstop. Have you seen the XDC staking that is available? Coming in hot, we have individual xdc staking pools are now open on globians if you haven't tried staking yet you're missing out because the xdc staking is at 9.99 percent apy and also we have here coming in hot from globians you shark has been enabled on the globians platform as you can see here a shark in a blue ocean joining tokens with startups creating opportunity and innovation shout out to globians and everything that they're doing over there but ladies and gentlemen we got a tour teshes giving you this heat on rwa's real world assets take a listen atul ritesh welcome to the episode it's delight to start 2024 the new season and atul i want you to tell the audience in your own words real world asset what what is an rwa in a blockchain context and how does that fit into the xdc mission or journey yeah first of all uh, thank you so much it's a pleasure being on this podcast. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, well, without complicating any terms, real world asset is nothing different than, uh, you know, this water bottle that we have here or the or the cup of coffee that you sip every morning or the toothbrush that you use or, or the car that you uh, use in your Uber or the one that you drive or the apartment that you stay in or the plane that you sit inside. You know, this is, this, this is the, as, as simple as it can be, these are real world assets. Now, Almost everything that we do in our day to day basis are based on you know, some of these things that we consume or use on a daily basis. These are all real world assets. Now, why is the whole RWA real world asset trend has come to the blockchain world? First of all, it's literally 40 to 50 trillion, probably 100 trillion. I don't even know the numbers. It's they're so big because they're part of everyday lives. That's the size of what we consume as people on an everyday basis. Are you getting this? Putting this right in front of your face, you have no choice but to eat. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't got your moon boots packed, you might want to take a trip to Amazon. But if you look, at, go into the details, like if on a, for a cup of coffee that you sip, where were the beans uh, farmed, right? How did they come here? How did they travel in the nice pack? How did they actually get to make that coffee finally into uh, to the cup that you're having or or the steering that you're holding you know where the rubber came from uh, how did that actually get manufactured where the raw materials from that came and how did that actually come and uh, to be uh, uh, at the at the car that you are uh, riding into this is now where the things get interesting right because every part of that supply chain from manufacturing raw material sourcing to the the deep tier uh, suppliers all the supply chain is massively massively linked financially and today the bank it's okay to be early okay it is okay to be early that's what we do let's go system is kind of inadequate to sell this that's the reason why blockchain has been um, looked at uh, a major technology to solve the really the the massive interconnectedness of this massive economy that we're looking at because if you really look at from uh, the manufacturer to the shipping to eventually how stuff gets to every individual today there's no banking system that can track it 
<laughs> the payments are very delayed. Uh, the the fundings are inadequate, and that does cause potentially massive catastrophes, like we saw in the in the COVID nineteen world. You know what happens early, or even just uh, one ship, uh, you know, uh, that was stuck somewhere in the canal caused so much disruption. So this is something that we all disruption is a must. Look on day to day basis, but it is massively linked to our our uh, day to day lives. And in the context of blockchain, you know, how do you represent the real world asset? Like if you have an apartment uh, in a building that's like a title deed, or if there was a shipment of coffee that you ordered, it could be represented by an invoice or uh, you know our purchase receipt. Once you start really getting these uh, key documents or data recorded on a blockchain, uh, you can have like this world of unlimited possibilities with it uh, to solve the problems that have not been solved before. Let me tell you, there's a five trillion dollar gap in just trade finance alone. If you look at the trade, if you look at the overall real world asset economy, it could be probably thirty to forty trillion dollars. No one knows the numbers, how big these are, and blockchain as a technology really only stands out to solve problems of that scale. Claire, before we get onto that, let's bring in. We often talk about layer one blockchains, and XTC is a layer one blockchain. What is a layer one blockchain? What does that mean? So I think thank you, Ronit, for having me here. And as you discuss about you know train networks, you talk about infrastructures where people they are traveling from one place to another place. Similarly, uh, when we talked about the blockchain infrastructure, layer one is a base. Ladies and gents, blockchain monkeys, you are witnessing epic innovation before the masses get to it. Infrastructures. And what we observed, like, you know, five years before, it, it was too much hype about Bitcoin, about clear ones. And I don't want to go into that particular hype. But what we observed, like, whenever, you, like, you know, someone is building on a blockchain, they required a reliable infrastructure. Uh, there are three important elements. Okay. First element is like, uh, suppose uh, some startups or like some real world use case, they are building on a blockchain. They should like, you know, blockchain should solve certain problems. Okay. They say, okay, I am going from point A to point one at one dollar. And you says like, I will take you to rocket and I will charge a thousand dollar. That's not a feasible thing. So layer one is like, you know, like a base infrastructure where other can build on. Uh, it's a base blockchain infrastructures. Uh, we have to make sure that uh, the gas fees, you know, it's a bigger problems with many uh, layer one networks. So we decided you can go ahead and say Ethereum if you want to, you know, the fees should be almost uh, nothing. So at least anyone can come and they can use the public infrastructures of blockchain. They can build like a beautiful use case on a uh, blockchain network. Similarly, uh, if you look at a mining site, okay, in layer one, previously it was like proof of work. And to be very frank, I hardly met any people. They are making money out of the mining. So we observe this problem, like, you know, like, if you want to create a decentralized infrastructure, there should be like people, those who comes to the like with some certain kind of infrastructures and they become a validator for layer one network. So one is a use case you want to deploy on layer one network. One is about like infrastructure providers. Third thing, it should be a decentralized. So we cannot give all benefit to the like those who are bringing with the infrastructures or we can not give entire benefit to, uh, to those who are building on it. And so we... I mean, why wouldn't I be on the blockchain with it? Because my blockchain monkey's full of octane in them. Yeah, I'm on the blockchain with it and my blockchain monkey's full of octane in them. To manage, you know, these three important aspects, whether it's a decentralization, whether it's a core infrastructure, third thing, it should be like, you know, feasible for a... Any, any like ecosystems, those who want to build on a uh, blockchain infrastructure. So layer one is like, you know, base infrastructures where anyone can build anything and it should be feasible. So we try to solve all these problems. Uh, and if you look at XGC network history, like, you know, when he just said that, yes, he does solves all those problems. We went on a live net. Most of the problem has been solved. Like whether it's energy consumption, whether it's a gas fee part, whether okay. it's a reward to the like you know infrastructure providers okay so we created a beautiful smart contract platform oh where you know we goodness xtc so 
So layer one is base infrastructure. A blockchain is a decentralized. Uh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but XDC got a fat ass piece of technology, and what you're providing is a uh, efficient, reliable, low cost. To give you a gas fee, that's about transaction cost, low cost way of doing transactions. Let's, let's delve this super interesting. Talking about the real world applications, which is right. What? Because that's what we want to know. And what? Like you know, like. How can we actually apply this to real world? The people built that you're most proud of or extremely significant on XDC that we can talk about today. I think going back to the same Rebecca example, mm, we have mm, created mm, a mm. platform where RW assets can be tokenized, fractionalized, uh, risk mitigated to be eventually settled in any currency that you want. And uh, in a price where... You see they're fractionalizing real estate. For those of you who know Algorand and what they're doing over there with Lofty, huh? You might want to take a look. It's extremely convertible uh, to where you know where, where the fees uh, of the all these kind of transactions are today. Now, this is our base model. This is our base technology. Anyone can use it. But we don't want to become a tokenization company. It's a protocol. Uh, we are supporting tokenization companies so that you know they can show their early success. Uh, like uh, Threat Tech, which is a, a big uh, uh, London-based uh, company run by banking veterans, they they were the uh, they were the ones who uh, mm, first mm, tokenized mm, trade uh, trade finance assets on the network. Now they're they're tokenizing uh, uh, U.S. Treasury bills. Uh, we've supported. Did you hear what he just said? Become a tokenization company. It's a protocol. Uh, we are supporting tokenization companies so that you know they can show their early success. Uh, like uh, Threat Tech, which is a, a big uh, uh, London-based uh, company run by banking veterans, they they were the uh, they were the ones uh, who, who first tokenized trade uh, trade finance assets on the network. Now they're they're tokenizing uh, uh, U.S. Treasury bills. Mm. Uh, we have supported mm. Comtech Gold as a project, which is tokenizing uh, gold uh, so that it can be brought from that uh, inaccessible form onto a mainstream financial world. And uh, there are other countless projects like Fathom and and and, and Trade Phoenix as a protocol. We've supported projects like Zoth and and some others, uh, funding societies who are eventually like uh, these uh, trade financial credit providers uh, and uh, who have used the power of tokenization, verification, fractionalization, and all that on the network. So it is. We have shown that the technology works, and some of the early companies that we have supported have demonstrated that success. So that TVL only for trade finance now is, I think, close to uh, probably something around 15, 20 million dollars. Now that's small TVL compared to what the other uh, blockchain ecosystem boasts of, but this is a real world asset TVL, which is a great difference. So it's not a speculative TVL; it's, it's a real world asset TVL. Now, having proven this model. Uh, it's it's an open standards. Anyone can come and build all this, right? And and uh, the network remains open for them to come in. So uh, yes, rightly summarized by you, we our play is getting the world to use it, uh, uh, and uh, so that we have built uh, a very specific standard kind of template or infrastructure for RWAs to be uh, tokenized, verified. Fractionalize and, and eventually settle and risk mitigate it on, on chain existing network with extreme competitive uh, fee structure, which otherwise is not possible in, in any other uh, infrastructure. For about some of the geographies that you're in, or you're seeing perhaps a, a very fast movement of adoption with these real world assets and the securitization and adoption of XDC? Yeah, so I think, you know, like uh, blockchain, you know, it's like, you know, one very neutral kind of a network. And we observe everywhere, like, you know, whether we go to Hong Kong, whether we go to uh, Singapore, whether we go to UK, whether we go to Australia, it's like all like, you know, institutions, uh, like, you know, use case, they're getting deployed on the network. So I don't like to give a specific location as such. It's a, like, you know, global network, anybody can build. And wherever we go, we always get attraction. Like, you know, I've been to Hong Kong last uh, uh, last quarter and I observed that, you know, people, they are crazy about building a use case on a, using a blockchain network. 
so overall it's a global trend i don't feel like it's only one country but some country they are very aggressive uh, from the compliance side from the regulation side like uh, ms you know you call it monetary authority of singapore they are also very aggressive they given uh, many license like they give license for custody like they approved like uh, like you know custody license way back in 2021 uh, forward thinking uh here also vara adg mdf they have like you know diverse kind of a license like uh, and i see trend is growing like people so as you can see ladies and gentlemen across the world things are in motion the usa is behind but you got in early and you got your moon boots strapped but well, they are watching each other and they are learning from each other and the trend is you know uptrend like you know if i i look at like last 8 10 years of this journey everything is going up in terms of adoption in terms of regulation in terms of licensing first you research and then you go research the research that you just researched and then you buy cuz this is standard in this bitch that's a p I went to YouTube University and now they mocking me with no degree. We say about a swift, keep it walking. We smoke your elders in these bushes. Bitcoin is talking. You don't have to be rich to be taking uh, advantage of this. This was the beginning of the greatest transformation of wealth the world has ever fucking seen since World War II. Blockchain. Blockchain. We talking about an intellectual to to try. It's the OT up in the streets, man. That's why we rip all on that blockchain. We don't we say about a swift. Keep it walking. We're smoking elders in these bushes. Bitcoin is talking.